Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, the channel where we explore the stories of the Bible and how they relate to our lives today. In this video, we will cover the story of Genesis 1-11, from the creation of the world to the Tower of Babel. We will compare and contrast the biblical account with other ancient stories of creation and flood, such as the Babylonian and Egyptian myths. We will highlight the uniqueness and significance of the biblical God and His plan for humanity, as well as the themes of sin, judgment, grace, and hope. Let's begin. The Creation of the World by God In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke everything into existence by His powerful word. He made light and darkness, sky and water, land and sea, plants and animals, sun and moon, and stars. He saw that everything was good and beautiful. But the best part of his creation was humans. He made them in his own image and likeness, to reflect his glory and character. He gave them the task of ruling and cultivating the earth, and enjoying his presence and blessing. He also gave them one command, not to eat from the tree of knowing good and evil, which was in the middle of the Garden of Eden. He finished his work on the sixth day, and rested on the seventh day, making it holy and special. The fall of humanity and the curse of sin. But something went wrong. A serpent, who was more crafty than any other creature, came to Eve, the first woman, and asked her, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve replied that they could eat from any tree, except the one in the middle, or they would die. The serpent lied to her, saying, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Eve was deceived by the serpent's words, and saw that the fruit was good for food and pleasing to the eye. She took some and ate it, and gave some to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate it too. Immediately, their eyes were opened, and they realized they were naked. They felt ashamed and afraid, and hid from God. God came looking for them, and asked them what they had done. They blamed each other and the serpent, but God held them all accountable. He cursed the serpent, and said that there would be enmity between him and the woman, and between his offspring and hers. He said that one of her offspring would crush his head, and he would strike his heel. He also cursed the woman, and said that she would have pain in childbirth, and that her desire would be for her husband, but he would rule over her. He cursed the man, and said that he would have to work hard to get food from the ground, which would produce thorns and thistles. He said that he would return to dust, for he was taken from it. He then made garments of skin for them, and clothed them. He also drove them out of the garden, and placed cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life. The spread of violence and corruption. The human race grew, but so did sin and evil. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain was a farmer, and Abel was a shepherd. They both brought offerings to God, but God accepted Abel's offering, which was from the firstborn of his flock, and rejected Cain's offering, which was from the fruit of the ground. Cain became angry and jealous, and killed his brother in the field. God confronted him, and asked him where his brother was. Cain lied, and said, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? God said that his brother's blood cried out to him from the ground, and cursed him. He said that he would be a restless wanderer on the earth, and that anyone who found him would kill him. Cain complained that his punishment was too great, and that he would be hidden from God's presence. God showed him mercy, and put a mark on him, to protect him from anyone who would harm him. Cain then went out from the Lord's presence, and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. He had a son named Enoch, and built a city named after him. His descendants became famous for their skills in music, metalwork, and violence. One of them, Lamech, was the first polygamist, and boasted to his wives that he had killed a young man for wounding him, and that if anyone avenged him, he would be avenged seventy-seven times. Meanwhile, Adam and Eve had another son, Seth, who had a son named Enosh. At that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord, the judgment of the flood and the grace of God. The world became more and more wicked, as the sons of God, who were either fallen angels or godly men, intermarried with the daughters of men, who were either human women or ungodly women. They produced mighty men of renown, who were either heroes or tyrants. God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. He regretted that he had made man, and was grieved in his heart. He decided to wipe out man, and every living thing, from the face of the earth. But he found grace in the eyes of Noah, who was a righteous man, blameless among his generation, and walked with God. God told Noah to build an ark, a large boat, and to take his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives, and two of every kind of animal, male and female, into the ark. He said that he would bring a flood of water upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, but that he would establish his covenant with Noah and his family, and save them. Noah did everything that God commanded him. He was six hundred years old when the flood came. The, the fountain of great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell for forty days and forty nights. The water prevailed over the earth, and covered the highest mountains. Everything that breathed on the dry land died, except those who were in the ark. 
the water remained on the earth for 150 days, and then God remembered Noah and the animals, and made a wind blow over the earth, and the water subsided. The ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, and Noah sent out a raven and a dove, to see if the water had dried up. The raven flew back and forth, but the dove returned to him, for there was no place to land. He waited seven days, and sent out the dove again, and it came back with a freshly plucked olive leaf, showing that the earth had sprouted again. He waited another seven days, and sent out the dove again, and it did not return to him, showing that the earth was dry. God told Noah to come out of the ark, with his family and the animals, and to be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Noah built an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings from every clean animal and bird. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, and said in his heart that he would never again curse the ground because of man, or destroy every living creature, even though the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. He blessed Noah and his sons, and gave them the same mandate as he gave to Adam and Eve, to fill the earth and subdue it. He also gave them permission to eat meat, as long as they did not eat blood, for blood is the life. He also gave them a commandment, not to shed blood, for whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. He then made a covenant with Noah and his descendants, and with every living creature, that he would never again destroy the earth with a flood. He gave them a sign of the covenant, a rainbow in the cloud, to remind them of his promise. The New Beginning and the Rebellion of Humanity Noah and his sons began to repopulate the earth, but they also repeated the sin of their ancestors. Noah planted a vineyard, and made wine, and drank of it, and became drunk and naked in his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness, and told his two brothers outside. Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it on their shoulders, and walked backward, and covered their father's nakedness, without looking at him. When Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he cursed Canaan, and said that he would be a servant of servants to his brothers. He blessed Shem, and said that God would dwell in his tents, and that Canaan would be his servant. He also blessed Japheth, and said that he would enlarge his territory, and that he would dwell in the tents of Shem, and that Canaan would be his servant. Noah lived 350 the spread of nations and the Tower of Babel. After the flood, Noah's sons and their descendants spread out and became the nations of the earth. They all spoke one language, and decided to build a city and a tower that reached to the heavens, to make a name for themselves and to prevent themselves from being scattered over the face of the earth. But God came down to see the city and the tower, and said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So God confused their language, and scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. The genealogy of Shem and the promise of a savior. The Bible then traces the genealogy of Shem, Noah's son, down to a man named Abram, who would later be called Abraham. God chose Abraham and made a covenant with him, promising to make him a great nation, to bless him, to make his name great, and to bless all peoples on earth through him. This was the beginning of the story of the nation of Israel, through whom the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, would come. The story of Genesis 1-11 sets the stage for the rest of the Bible, showing us the problem of sin and the need for a Savior, and pointing us to the promise of God's grace and hope. Conclusion Thank you for joining us on this journey through Genesis 1-11. We hope that you have gained a deeper understanding of these foundational stories of the Bible, and how they relate to your life today. Remember, the God who created the world, who judged sin, who showed grace to Noah, who confused the languages at Babel, and who chose Abraham, is the same God who loves you, who sent his son to die for your sins, and who invites you to be part of his story. May you experience his love, grace, and hope in your life. Until next time, keep exploring the Celestial Chronicles.